Attorney Rafael B. Oliano, and uh, Director Ray F. Sumalipao. From the National, uh, from the Civil Service Commission, we have Attorney Christian Don Gallardo Molina. From the DOJ, we have Ms. Normina R. Hajula Tadifa. From the Land Registration Authority, we have Attorney Sal Valente Tadeus B. Elizalde and Engineer Ante V. Gamiao. From the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, on the Peace and Reconciliation and Unity, we have Presidential Assistant Cesar B. Yano, Executive Director Cesar D. De Mesa, and Director Jordan S. Bayam. From the Commission on Human Rights, we have Attorney Erwin M. Kaliba. From the Department of National Defense, we have ASEC Henry A. Robinson Jr. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Captain Norsal D. Dimaporo. From uh, the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Percival Augustus P. Placer. We also have online the Chairperson of the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission, Mrs. Mo Bleeker. From the Land Management Bureau, we have Attorney Carlon Pambid. From the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao Parliament, we have Deputy Speaker Omar Sema. We also have uh, Parliament Member Jose Ribani Lorena. We also have uh, Attorney uh, Raisa H. Chajuri. Thank you so much for coming today. That's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kobusek. Today we'll be hearing Senate Bill Numbers 2043 and 2392. 2392, authored by Senator Luis Ontiveros and Senator Francis Tolentino, respectively. These are the proposed bills on the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Act for Bangsamoro. At this juncture, the Chair would like to give his opening statement. Members of this committee, ladies and gentlemen, isang magpagpalang umaga sa ating lahat. This hearing of the Committee on Local Government is has been called to order. Today, the Senate reaffirms its commitment to forging a lasting peace in the Bangsamoro region. We will build upon the progress made <clears throat> when the Bangsamoro organic law was enacted. For the record, I strongly supported that measure and worked towards its passage during the 17th Congress. <clears throat> These bills will continue that mission. They will secure the peace by addressing the numerous historic injustices wrecked upon the Bangsamoro region. It will address long-standing grievances and begin the process of healing. For as one saying goes, a new house cannot be built from bricks from the past. Similarly, a prosperous Bangsamoro must be built on a sturdy foundation of justice and reconciliation. It must ensure that its people will never feel alienated ever again, nor compelled to seek justice through the barrel of a gun. This measure seeks to establish a seven-member commission which will implement a transitional justice and reconciliation program for the Bangsamoro. It will conduct information campaigns, recommend measures to dismantle impunity, and propose solutions for those affected by armed conflicts and land disputes. To conclude, to my dear colleagues who will be joining us later, much has been done to bring peace to Bangsamoro people. We have lived to see the rifles pounded into plowshares. The hands which were once armed are now tilling the land and building the future. We must now work to nurture this peace and with justice. Today, we will ensure that justice rolls like the Mindanao River and healing flows like many of its streams. Maraming salamat po. So now we move to the hearing proper and we shall hear the different uh, positions of uh, the different uh, stakeholders but i uh, just the chair just i uh, would like to remind everybody uh, i'm sure that you have submitted your position papers wag na po natin basahin ang buong laman ng position papers yung pong gist lamang no para po uh, because there's still a lot of people resource person that we have to hear anyway the committee will is in uh, receipt of your position paper so yun na lang pong gist ang ating pong in summary, if uh, if possible, yan lang po ang ating pong uh, uh, banggitin sa araw na ito. Okay, so now we move on. First will be the position statement of Honorable Ahud Balawang Ibrahim, 
the interim chief minister of the Bank Samoro government represented by Deputy Speaker Omasema and Deputy Speaker Lanag Aling. Sirs, you have the floor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have a common uh, statement with this particular uh, issue and uh, we agreed to uh, uh, designate uh, Attorney Raisa Jajuri, MP of the Bank Samoro Transition Authority to read the statement of the uh, bar and the statement of the uh, Chief Minister Ahud Balawag. May we recognize the statement? Yes, uh, Member of Parliament, Raisa Jajuri, you. you're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what I will be reading, Mr. Chair, is the position paper of the Peace Implementing Panel of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, uh, which now leads the Bank Samoro Transition Authority. This is just two pages, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, which signed the Comprehensive Agreement on the, Comprehens on the Bank Samoro with the Government of the Philippines, is in full support of any action, policy, or legislation that will lead to the complete implementation of the Peace Pact. Thus, we welcome the filing and hope for the swift passage of the law that will create a national body for transitional justice and reconciliation for the Bank Samoro. Since the signing of the CAB in 2014, and even after the passage of Republic Act 11054, that paved the way for the Bank Samoro Autonomous Region's creation in 2019, our people have yearned for the rightful redress of the legitimate grievances, historical injustices, marginalization through land dispossession, and human rights violations that marked our past. The enactment of this legislation will be the first real step towards the fulfillment of this aspect of the CAB, the aspect which seeks to heal the so-called wounds of conflict. We are of firm belief that there can be no true healing and moving forward by a people or peoples that suffered through generations of oppression, if not predicated on the attainment of justice in its varied forms. However, Mr. Chair, beyond the passage of just any legislation, the Bank Samoro government and the MILF believe that for it to serve its purpose and fulfill its uh, reason for being, uh, as identified in the peace agreement, the following key elements must define the enactment. One, the creation of a single body where all efforts pertaining to transitional justice and reconciliation are centralized. This body should be national in scope so that communities outside the barm, which comprise the bulk of those affected by the historical injustices, compared to those living inside the region, can be covered by its jurisdiction. This also enables its exercise of authorities over national government agencies, and therefore allows it to function using the whole of government approach in its fulfillment of the rights to truth, to justice, and to reparation of the victims, and better guarantees the non-recurrence of violations. Therefore, the uh, Bank Samoro government, the MILF, uh, endorsed the uh, creation of the National Commission provided in the Senate bills. Number two, the adoption of the recommendations of the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission, TJRC, from the framework used up to the implementation of the spe specific projects and activities. The exhaustive discussion by the TJRC, the body created by the negotiating parties, to undertake a specific study on this matter is replete with proposed next steps, which can be the starting point for the National Commission. Number three, the direct and robust involvement and participation of the BARM offices in initiatives for transitional justice, such as the Bank Samoro Human Rights Commission for Human Rights Abuses, the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education, and the Bank Samoro Commission for the Preservation of uh, cultural heritage for the development of school curricula on the Bank Samoro history and the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs for gathering the pers perspectives of the non-Moro and other minority indigenous communities among many other offices over the various facets of transitional justice. 
The perspective of the bank tomorrow, which may very well be articulated by these BARM offices, can add value to the National Commission from the conceptualization of initiatives to actual implementation and eventual monitoring. And lastly, Mr. Chair, uh, the participation of the Bank Samora government and or the MI MILF in mm -hmm. the identification of the members of the National Commission. As the sub-national government entity primarily affected by transitional justice programs and as a party to the CAB respect respectively, uh, the, their input on who and what qualities in an individual can do justice to the delivery of the arduous task of the National Commission is crucial. When all these basic features are found in the law, Mr. Chair, the Bank Samoro government and the MILF believe that it will increase the likelihood of success of the transitional justice program for the Bank Samoro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, thank you uh, very much for that uh, uh, common, at this common position na po, no? Uh, yung statement nila, uh, Interim Chief Minister Ibrahim, also uh, uh, Member Parliament, uh, Bang Samoro Parliament Speaker, Pangalian Balindong, and uh, Mohager Iqbal. So thank you also for Deputy Speaker Ali and uh, Deputy Speaker Omasema, my Kuya Jose Lorena, and uh, Member Parliament Raisa Jajuri for coming to this uh, hearing, all the way from, ano, from BAR. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta. Now we shall hear online, tunahin na po natin yung online, uh, position statement of uh, Ms. Mo Bleeker, former chair of the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission. Good morning. Ma'am, you're online. Uh, you're, you have the floor po. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Mo I just need, thank you. Just one second. Um, I need to open my text. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen. I first wish to thank you for the invitation to participate in this Senate hearing about such important bills aiming to the creation of a National Transition and Reconciliation Commission for the Bank Zamoro. The TGRC was created as part of the normalization process to be put into place following the signing of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bank Zamoro, CAMP. I was invited to chair this commission by both peace panels with the support of Switzerland. 18 months after its public launch in October 2014, the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission presented its final report in Cotobato and in Manila in March 2016. The findings and recommendations were endorsed by both parties to the peace agreement. I wish to underline that both the GPH and MILF peace panels have totally respected the TGRC autonomy, for which I express my gratitude and deepest respect to both of them. The TGRC, as you know, was mandated to propose appropriate mechanism to address legitimate grievances of the Bank Zamoro people, to correct historical injustices, to address human rights violations, including marginalization through land depossession, and to make recommendations with a view to promote healing and reconciliation of the different communities that have been affected by the conflict. To implement its mandate, the TJRC designed its own dealing with the past approach based on the acknowledged rights of the affected community and the duties of states in the access to and promotion of the truth, justice, reparation and guarantees of non-recurrence. More than 100 people, women and men from the Bank Zamoro region and at national level actively engage with the TGRC as facilitators, as experts, key informants in this consultation process. Community, religious leaders, academics, experts, practitioners in the field of conflict transformation and human rights, public servants, representatives of the security and the business sectors, Muslim, Christians and indigenous peoples. The TGRC opted for listening. We felt indeed that listening was the best way to truly understand what 
legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro people, historical injustice, human rights violation, and marginalization through land dispossession represent, in terms of facts on the ground and in terms of experience, perception, and identity. With the support of more than 25 trained facilitators, the TGRC conducted listening sessions in some 200 11 Moro indigenous and settler communities in Mindanao and the Zulu archipelago involving more than 3,000 community members and local officials. All these communities have been affected by the conflict during several generations in a way or another. We also established separate working groups composed of national experts from diverse professional backgrounds, historians, anthropologists, archivists, sociologists, political scientists, and experts in legal affairs. These people worked with us on the four topic of our mandate and drew upon the knowledge already existing in hundreds of reports, field studies, history books, documentaries. They produced excellent reports and came out with sound recommendations. The TGRC also realized that dealing with the past assessment, meaning that we reviewed what had been done until now in the Philippines in the field of transitional justice, which initiatives had been undertaken in the past, what had been their result, and could be built on these experiences. As a final step, we realized also key policy interviews. Namely, we met with dozens of civil servants, public officials, policymakers, and ask them for their opinion about the recommendations compiled during this whole process. Were they realistic in the sense of being feasible, manageable, and achievable? I can tell you today that all people we met were con convinced us that instead of having a Bangsamoro problem, there was, and I'm sure there still is, a Bangsamoro opportunity. Indeed, our interlocutors, our interlocutors convinced us that the people of the Bangsamoro and the Philippines were in a position to deal seriously with the legacy of the troubled past and to constructively address past injustices and abuse. In this way, the main recommendation for the creation of a National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission was seen as a unique opportunity for the sustainable peace peaceful future of both the Bangsamoro and the Philippines. To conclude with this general part, let me recall that you can find this main report and all the other reports about the listening process and on land dispossession on the website um, of the uh, TGRC.ph, including the documentary realized based upon the main TGRC report. Allow me now to enter quickly in the substance. What were the findings of the next of the TGRC report? First, that legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro people were rooted in historical experience and have become part of the collective identity of the Bangsamoro. Legitimate grievances designate for them the harm suffered by the Bangsamoro and indigenous people during decades which have never been officially acknowledged nor addressed seriously, whether they are political, economic, social, cultural in nature. Second, that historical injustice refers to wrongdoings committed or sectioned by governments, Spanish, American, and Japanese colonial governments and the Philippine governments that hurt or harmed people repeatedly and systematically over time and were not properly addressed. It furthermore refers to their perception of having been erased, excluded from public spaces, the national narrative and history, as well as having been labeled negatively, that affected the Moro's sense of self and culture, behavior and relationship with others. People lamented the fact that they have been treated as outcast, second-class citizens, and the wild and savage other that their narrative had been excluded from the national history, their names removed from public spaces, and that they felt that they were constantly portrayed negatively or treated with a profound disrespect for their dignity. This has deeply affected their sense of self-worth, trust, and their behavior towards others. Thirdly, human rights violation. In the course of the research of the TGRC study group and the listening process, 
the violation of both political and civil rights, as well as economic, social and cultural rights of the Moro and indigenous people, figured prominently throughout all discussions on legitimate grievances, historical injustice and marginalization through land dispossession. People referred to extrajudicial killings and for disappearance, torture, arbitrary arrest, rape, mistaken identities that took place decades ago and continue uh, to the present time. In the context of armed conflict, excuse me, I'm opening my camera. Uh, in the context of armed conflict, mass atrocity crimes occurred before and during the period of martial law, we became aware that the cumulative effect of historical injustices and subsequent continuing human rights violations shall not be underestimated. We were informed that many actors have been involved in the commission of these violations, state actors, state affiliated armed groups, non-state armed actors, and multiple forms of violence have been committed. Although no party to the Bank Zamoro conflict is innocent of accusations of human rights abuse and of international humanitarian law violations, we found enough reasons to believe that state security forces or paramilitary forces under their control are responsible for the most heinous crimes and atrocity in the past. An additional factor in this context was that violence has not been only vertical, top-down, but also increasingly of horizontal nature. Our report explains these aspects in detail. As the conflict does not end, and given its multifold nature, horizontal violence multiplied. Pocket wards tended to erupt between different communities. Rideau, for example, was, and possibly is, still regarded as one of the greatest sources of violence, displacement and insecurity by Moro communities in the conflict areas of Mindanao. The violence against women ranked second after massacres in terms of the frequency of their being mentioned during the TGRC listening process. The widespread commission of rape and other acts of violence by government armed forces and auxiliaries against Moro and indigenous women was meant to demoralize the enemy and to destroy the moral fabric of the Moro society where women are seen as bearers of honor and culture. Internal enforced displacement studies showed that some 41% of the Moro adult population in Maginanao and Lao del Norte had experienced forced displacement at some time during the last decade. Of those, nearly 30% of the affected communities reported having been displaced multiple times and for an average length of six months to a year or more. Decades of conflict-related displacement in the Bank Zamoro has had a profoundly negative impact on the welfare and the development of the affected population and of the region as a whole. In fact, the relationship between displacement, poverty and migration is mutually reinforcing. Firstly, marginalization through land dispossession. The dispossession of the Moro and indigenous people from their ancestral territories and their ensuing political, social, economic and cultural marginalization are largely acknowledged as a historical fact. Studies establish that that the land dispossession itself has been systematic and embedded in laws and institutions. It is crucial to understand that from the perspective of the Bangsamoro and indigenous peoples, land dispossession and the resulting marginalization of their community has been seen as a form of historical injustice of such a gravity that in their eyes it justified at the time secession from the Philippines. We were told that the resettlement programs involving migrants from Luzon and the Visayas had taken on such dimension as to be qualified as ethnic flooding, by which the native population had been reduced to a minority. Moreover, land dispossession not only resulted in political and economic marginalization, but also in the loss of social and cultural identity, the land being not only the source of life in community, but also the basis for Moro, and indigenous people's collective identity. This is what the TGRC heard 
that it was it was told through the listening process, and this was then corroborated by the different study groups, the dealing with the past assessment, and key policy interviews. Based on all these elements, the TGRC developed its own understanding of this phenomenon, namely that the complex of grievances and injustices outlined in the TGRC mandate are the consequence of three mutually reinforcing phenomena, violence, impunity, and neglect. What we meant by this can be briefly described as follows. Systemic violence by the state expressed in terms of political, socioeconomic, and cultural exclusion, and then the disproportionate use of direct violence. A pervasive, a pervasive culture of impunity that undermines the practice of the rule of law, deep neglect by the state combined with a lack of vision for the common good. Allow me to conclude now with the TGRC recommendations. First of all, it is important to acknowledge that the number of initiatives that belong to the universe of transitional justice have already been uh, undertaken in the Philippines to address the legacy of the past. There are several good examples, among them the important endeavor by the Human Rights Victim Claims Board in the area of martial law, victim compensation, and the ongoing efforts of the Commission on Human Rights and others to honor their memory in a museum, the mainstreaming of the human rights and international humanitarian law in the armed forces and national police, the creation of the human rights office and the institutional and the institutionalization of its human rights manual in the AFP, as well as the identification and protection of relevant archives related to human rights violation during the martial law period. But while each of these initiatives have been so important in and by themselves, these initiatives have not had, had a significant impact on the situation on the Bank Samoru for several reasons. They did not adequately address the root causes. They promoted ad hoc isolated measures instead of a holistic strategy. They were not able to draw a line before and after the periods of wrongdoings and injustice. They did not contribute to the prevention of revisionist discourse and denial about injustices committed in the past. This shortcoming have indeed informed the TGRC recommendations, which are formulated with the intention to open a constructive path for the Bank Zamoro and Filipino context that can both address root causes and their consequences. Furthermore, the TGRC was also aware that it did not need to reinvent the wheel. Indeed, more than 50 countries in the world have gone through or are actually undergoing this kind of transitional justice processes. Mistakes have been made along the way. Lessons learned have been learned. Lessons have been learned and good practices have emerged. We can build on them. Today, we are in a position to acknowledge the prerequisites for such processes to have serious impact. For example, the guarantees of total independence and autonomy for any TJ bodies, the solidity and consistency of the architecture and mandate of such commissions, and the widely recognized impartiality of the members uh, of the commissioners of the such commission. The TGRC developed two sets of recommendations, and the most strategic one was to create an independent national transitional justice and reconciliation commission led by national personality of the highest moral standing and above the line of conflict. This independent body with a prominent pertinent legal powers shall create four subcommissions to listen to the victim of the conflict, investigate serious violations of international human rights and international humanitarian law, and inquire into specific events of the war. Contribute to the resolution of outstanding land dispute in conflict affected areas in the Bank Zamoro and address the legacy of land dispossession with concrete uh, measures to provide redress. Next, engage in the structure and the struggle against impunity by promoting accountability and strengthening the rule of law in relation to past and present wrongdoings, including crimes identified under the Rome Statute and under international conventions to which the Philippines is a signatory. Next slide, promote healing and reconciliation among the different communities affected by the conflict. 
Additionally, the TGRC shared more than 90 recommendations that emerged from the consultation process. Some of them have been implemented or are foreseen to be implemented by existing institutions at Philippine level or in the Bank Zamoro as part of an ongoing agenda of a state that takes its responsibility. Yet, while we can only congratulate all the civil servants who have been working on the 90 recommendation, the creation of an independent body such as these two bills are foreseeing is an absolute necessity to address the root causes of a systematic forms of violence, impunity and neglect that were prevailing and moreover to finalize the implementation of the peace agreement. Regarding the bills and to conclude, the independence and autonomy of such a transitional justice body is crucial. You do have domestic examples on which you can build, such as the Human Rights Commissions, for example. The other element is the consistency of the mandate and its architecture. And regarding both points, and upon your invitation, I have made some observations with a view to draw your attention to the importance of the following that the Commission shall be mandated to implement a strategy and a program, that the four subcommissions will shall be placed under the Commission's authority, and furthermore, as far as I can judge, you have attributed the needed powers to this Commission, notably in terms of subpoena and authority, equally a duration of six years with a possible extension of three years is a very good solution. I've handed over my observations to the Senate, as requested, and I hope that they will be useful for your further debates. And furthermore, and on a more personal note, I wish to congratulate the authorities of the Philippines and of the Bank Zamoro for their sincere and continuous efforts to finalize the implementation of the peace agreement. Allow me to encourage you to continue with determination. You are making history, and it will contribute to a sustainable and constructive future. And now, the creation of the National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission is an important, if not crucial, milestone thereof. I'm convinced that such commission will become a strategic step for all the Philippine and Bank Zamoro peoples to acknowledge the painful past and decide with sense of responsibility to promote a new way of living together as citizens a new societal contract, to create sincere conditions for reconciliation and a new culture of peaceful coexistence based on equality of rights, duties and the rule of law. All this, honorable senators, will be crucial to prevent the recurrence of the conflict. Indeed, this is prevention in action and this is a future orientation of transitional justice, a future for sustainable peace. The creation of the National Commission is indeed a historical opportunity of the Bank Zamoro, a historical opportunity for the Philippines. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Moblicker, for that very comprehensive uh, uh, position of TJRC. I know it's uh, 3 a.m. there, so we very much appreciate your uh, input to this committee. Thank you, ma'am. So before we continue, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of our, our COMELIC chair, Attorney George Garcia, COMELIC uh, commissioners, uh, Commissioner Ray Bulay, Commissioner Ernesto Maceda, Jr. So thank you, sirs, for coming. Kala ko po, ano lang, okay na sana eh. But uh, we have the presence of uh, the chair and three commi two commissioners. Siguro unahin na lang po namin kayo mamaya doon sa questions no and uh, uh the so that uh, we would not want to take our time that importante baka we know how busy comic is Pre hopefully not preparing for pi hopefully for the election of 2025 uh last uh, before we continue yung pong uh last position of um before then we will ask the different stakeholders and agencies already Position statement of the ND Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr., former, former Secretary, Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity, or OPAPRU. So it, uh, he will be represented by Presidential Assistant Cesar Yano. So you have the floor, then we will already ask the questions on the stakeholders. Thank you, Your Honor. The Honorable Chairman of the Senate Committee on Local Government, 
Senate officials, Chairman Garcia and the commissioners of COMELEC, other guests, especially our partners from BARM, good morning. We would like to convey the apologies from Secretary Galvez for not making it today as expressed in his letter uh, to the committee. The Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, or OPAPRU, appreciates the Senate bills authored by Senator Tolentino and Senator Rontiveros. Both bills are proposing for the creation of the National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission for the Bangsamoro or the NTJRCB and the establishment of a Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Program or TJRP for the Bangsamoro. These policy measures support the pronouncement of the President in fulfilling the commitments to the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro or the CAB with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF wherein transitional justice and reconciliation is one of the key aspects and considered the heart and soul of the normalization. The UPAPRO fully supports the NTJRCB creation. It recognizes the aspirations of the Bangsamoro for the creation of a national TJR body to implement measures that are anchored on the dealing with the past framework to promote healing, reconciliation and unity at the local, regional and national levels. The UPAPRO fully supports the NTJRCB creation with initial recommendations for consideration. Number one, expansion of ex officio members comprised of concerned national government agencies like DOJ, DILG, DND, CHR and UPAPRO together with credible domestic and accredited civil society organizations or CSOs and established private institutions from the academic, religious, legal, and media sectors. The inclusion of concerned national government agencies as ex officio members of the proposed commission shall provide a deeper sense of context and expertise to address legitimate issues, which shall strengthen the scope of effective implementation of the commission's mandate an exercise of its functions. Moreover, the inclusion of the concerned national government agencies shall promote accountability to the officers and offices in order to foster immediate and responsive action in the de delivery of its offices responsibility within the present sphere of an established bureaucracy. Second, the formation of a technical working group or TWG by the Senate with national agencies and BARM to further study the function and structure of the NTJRCB as well as clarify on and respond to issues that may arise from the NTJRCB creation. Third, OPAPRO recognizes that the plight of our brothers in the Bangsamoro region dates back since time immemorial. However, for purposes of transitional justice and reconciliation, there is a need to consider challenges in the ver verification of the legitimacy of reports on violations of human rights and international humanitarian law in the Bangsamoro since 1948. The OPAPRO maintains its commitment to support transitional justice for the Bangsamoro, specifically the creation of a national mechanism and the establishment of a transitional justice and reconciliation program that will address legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro people, correct historical injustices, and address human rights violations and marginalization through land dispossession and promote national healing and reconciliation at large. Your Honor, we hope and pray for the passage of this bill into law in order to contribute to the lasting peace, healing, and reconciliation in the Bangsamoro. Thank you. Thank you, our uh, Presidential Assistant, former General Jim, uh, Cesariano. Thank you, sir, for being here. And the Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of our colleague, members of this committee, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Sir, thank you for coming. You might want to uh, have yeah, a statement. Just think. Okay, so we move on already. Uh, we will already start to ask the questions on the different agencies. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to take advantage of the presence of our COMELEC chair and the two commissioners, and we do not want to keep you here. Uh, in 2021, RA11593 was passed, which extended the transition period of MARM from 2022 to 2025, thereby postponing the first regional parliamentary elections in the region. 
Uh, question po, uh, is the COMELEC ready to hold its first, the very first parliamentary elections in the region? Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, magandang magandang umaga po and to all the uh, agencies uh, present, representatives of the different agencies as well as the uh, uh, MILF Implementing uh, Peace Panel. Um, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, as far as the COMELEC is concerned, we are prepared to conduct the Bangsamoro parliamentary election by 2025. Uh, ang pakiusap lang po sana namin talaga, lalong-lalo na po sa ating uh, Bangsamora Parliament, ay sana po maipas at nakaagad yung pong, uh, redistricting sapagkat uh, hindi po ganun kadali sa part ng commission elections kung sakasakali po na uh, mad malilate yung uh, pagpasa po nito sapagkat eh, redistricting, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, just in case po na maipapasa later would mean a disaster on the part of the COMELEC simply because we are going to transfer certain data especially the list the, the voters list from the original list to a new uh, district halimbawa po dati rate based sa ating uh, legislative district yung isang municipality na to na andito sa distrito na to kung bigla po siyang malilipat yung mga kababayan natin do sa distrito na to sa bayan na to do sa palibagong distrito medyo magkakaproblema po tayo uh, Mr. Chair and that's why I, but, but we received the commitment from the Bangsamoro Parliament that they'll be passing at, at least, I think, this week, the uh, redistricting on today. Uh, today. So that's a very good news, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, your order. So, so as far as the COMELEC is concerned, mabubuo na po yung aming uh, preparation because we are likewise preparing for the uh, Parliament uh, for the creation of the eight municipalities. Yan pong plebisito ngayong April 13, dyan po sa Bangsamoro. Yung 63, municip 63 barangays po. And then um, we are going to likewise pass today, today also, the implementing rules and regulation of the election code, which was uh, uh, passed last year by the Bangsamoro Parliament. So we are going to pass likewise the IRR today. Medyo ma masalimut po kasi yung mismo nga implementing rules and regulation. But we will see to it that uh, we will now begin with the accreditation of political parties and the sectors that will be properly represented, Mr. Chair and Your Honor, dito po sa ating parliament. So uh, lahat po naman ngayon so far ay uh, maayos ang preparation namin. We will have two ballots uh, sa ating pong, uh, parliamentary election by next year. One ballot for the national and local election and the other ballot, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, para naman po doon sa parliamentary election. Siyempre po naandun yung member of the parliament per uh, district as determined at naandun din po yung mga sa sector, sa sector or uh, political parties and other representation. Thank you po, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, our uh, Commonwealth Chair. Deputy Speaker, yeah. uh, Oma. Yeah, thank please. you, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ch Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, as mentioned by the uh, Honorable Chair of the Commission on Elections, we are almost done with the uh, legislation of the districting, and uh, we hope to pass it today. We are still in the period of amendment, uh, and uh, uh, we just suspended the proceedings today. And uh, upon return of the uh, members today, they will... Uh, uh, proceed with the amendment. Uh, Certificate of urgency. Yeah, and, and it has already been certified by the Chief Minister as urgent. Uh, and uh, we hope that we can pass it uh, today, and the latest would be uh, tomorrow, Mr. Chair. Uh, but of course, we still have uh, concerns. Uh, there are pending petitions uh, against the laws that we have passed, particularly the uh, election code. And uh, 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 just very recently, uh, the, the parliament has passed a resolution supporting the call of the president for charter change. And we believe that charter change can change the course of history as far as the uh, election codes uh, of the Bangsamoro is concerned, as far as the uh, uh, local governance code and as far as the uh, election code of the Bangsamoro is concerned. It is, this is our very, these are very material uh, legislations that uh that uh that affects our governance that affects also that could probably affect the outcome of the first uh, bangsamoro elections thank you mr chair thank you uh that's good news at this uh the parliament already acted no the yung pong uh, kailangan po ng COMELEC, so that there will be no more delays so thank you for that uh second i uh 
Chairman, uh, what have been the preparations of the COMELEC to ensure the peaceful elections next year? Kasi alam niyo naman tong before that was yun naman challenge sa area yan, sa region. But I hope with the creation of the BARM, uh, buka naman magiging mas maayos na. So any more challenges? Mr. Chair, yeah, your honors. Uh, as far as the COMELEC is concerned, uh, ang kauna-una po talagang dapat ayusin yung loss. We already passed the election code. Perhaps they, be, they already passed already the uh, the local government code, the administrative code, and we are now waiting for the IRR. We're going to pass the IRR. If uh, we are going to uh, conduct the election peacefully, the plebiscite in the 63 barangays, and it will be converted into eight uh, municipalities, makukompleto na po, uh, Your Honor, yung territorial jurisdiction ng uh, Bangsamoro. And so, uh, as far as the complex concerned, your first phase of the full transformation of the Bangsamoro is already completed. And therefore, yung election po, Mr. Chair, we will closely coordinate as we have done in the Barangay and SK election with the Bangsamoro, especially with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the commission, the higher education uh, institution in the Bangsamoro because we'd like to closely likewise coordinate with our teachers. Nagagamitin po namin as electoral board members sa darating na halalan. And most importantly, we are going to uh, request for a critical cooperation and collaboration with the Bangsamoro government because of the new machines that the COMELEC are going to use. We would like to fully uh, disseminate and to educate our people on how to use these new machines. And we can only do that if we can have a very close coordination with the Bangsamoro government. Uh, kasi po, very important that, uh, we, that nobody will be left behind as far as the use of new technology is uh, concerned. Thank you, Chairman George Garcia. So it will be a, a historic election next year. No, ito may ano na, uh, for 2025 for the Bangsamoro uh, government. No, uh, that will be something to watch for next year. Mr. Chair, as a final note on this matter, would like to likewise announce to the Bangsamoro government that your commission elections will be going to Camp Darapanan and Camp Abubakar because we would like to register our people in these areas because we would like to prove that as we uh, as we have done during the first day of the conduct of the election, we went to Pag-asa Island, so we would like to go to likewise these places because we wanted to prove that there is peace in these areas, especially in the heartland of the Bangsamoro. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm uh, Senator but General Bato de la Rosa. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. One question lang to Uparo. He, while while waiting for Congress to pass the bills proposing the establishment of National Transitional and Reconciliation Commission of the Bang, on the Bangsamoro, would it be possible for the Executive Department to issue an executive order to implement and operationalize the report of the TRJC submitted in 2016? Para masimula na dandan habang kasi baka Matagal pa lumabas itong batas ito. Sana kung pwede. Kasi I, I, as I have observed, no, as I have noted, no, EO 79, series of 2019, as amended by EO 6, series of 2022, created the inter-cabinet cluster mechanism on normal, normal, normalization. is mandated to lead the implementation of the recommendations provided for in the report of the TRJRC. So, the reminder lang, may meron na kayong ganito, no? baka pwedeng uh, buhayin ninyo para mag-start na kayo habang kinakrap pa namin yung batas. With the permission of the Chair, uh, may I ask uh, Executive Director De Mesa to respond to that? Yes, uh, Executive Director De Mesa, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, the ICCM and sub-cluster on uh, TJR came up with the roadmap recommending uh, PAPS for the TJR. And uh, we submitted them to the M MILF counterpart. And uh, just uh, last year, we started uh, validating the roadmaps, the different PAPS uh, uh, proposed by the ICCMN members. And right now, uh, we have completed validation and uh, we have uh, recommended 115 uh, PAPs for uh, both government and the uh, BARM. 
So the Barma agencies also contributed to the PAPs and we are about to present them to the ICCMN members uh, for the government and the uh, bar ministries for the MILF side. And once uh, we have uh, gathered the uh, comments, we will uh, 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 meet again and present the output to the uh, panel for uh, implementation. Thank, thank you, you thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's good to hear that uh, it's a positive development, no? Uh, kahit na hindi pa pala napasa itong batas na ito, nag-start na kayo. Salamat sa mag-order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank Mr. You. Chair, may I add? Uh, yes. Um, Actually, uh, during the course of validation of these PAPs, we have gathered uh, a total of 29 PAPs already completed by the national government, 51 ongoing, 33 pending and two uh, postponed. Uh, uh, some of uh, other uh, uh, agencies' actions are conflicting with the BARM, so others were postponed. But generally, uh, we have uh, uh, accomplished uh, some of the uh, actions that addresses the different recommendations. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Before we continue, uh... Siguro wala na kaming concern sa COMELEC. Anyway, you will be leaving the executive uh, director, no? Okay lang po. Uh, we'd like to excuse already our chairman, George Garcia, our two uh, commissioners, Ray Bulay and uh, Ernest Maceda Jr. Thank you for Thank coming you. this Thank morning. Mr. Chair, uh, we, we're going to submit to your committee immediately after the passage of the IRR so that uh, the committee will have a copy of the implementing rules and regulation of the election code. Uh, of the Bank Samoro. Thank you very much, Mr. I'm Chair. Sure that this will be a challenge, but this is a historic, I, as I mentioned, because this will re uh, really pave the way to lasting peace. As it, at least, yung BARM now will now have their elected leaders by next year. No, malaking ano to. Malaking may iba na to. Tiyan, sin ba to? Sabi ko kasi dati, pag may election dun, ta takot lahat eh. No? So talagang sa region na yun. When kung, nung may conflict pa, nung wala pa yung BARM. So, at, sabi nga dun eh, Pag may ano daw doon, may, may historia, kinuwento ko si Sen Bato. Datay daw, dala yung anak, tsaka yung isa, bata. Ilan kayong boboto? Tatlo. Ha? Ah, hindi pa po pwede yan. Ah, marunong ka pa sa akin, ako ang tatay. <laughs> Pero ngayon, hindi na siguro mangyayari dahil we have already the barm present. Diba? That will be historic next year. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. thank Mr. you, Chairman. Chairman. Thank you very much. Chairman George, Commissioners, thank you, thank you. Siguro we go to... Uh, Bank Samoro Transition Authority Parliament. No? Um, Sino mo yung sagot sana? So, sige, tanin ko naman ni Opapro. Oh, okay na. So, sige, sige. Bank Samoro Transition Authority Parliament. Siguro si Deputy Speaker uh, Omar, uh, Omar, Omar Sema can answer or anybody. Uh, under the Bangsamore Organic Law, the Bangsamore Parliament is empowered to enact a transitional justice mechanism to address the legitimate grievances of the Bangsamore people, including the indigenous group. Sa kasalukuyan, nasan po ang Bangsamore sa aspeto ng transitional justice? Ano po ang ating mga nasimula na ginagawa upang mapag-usapan at pagdoon ng pansin ang mga legitimate grievances ng ating mga kapatid doon sa region, sa area? Where are we? Where is that uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, in the Parliament, we also uh, there were measures that were filed uh, that has relationship with uh, transitional justice and reconciliation. I believe uh, that it is a private member bill. It was filed by one of our colleagues, uh, uh, Attorney Liza Alamia. And uh, however, there are, th yes, uh, there were two resolutions, I believe, also that were filed and we passed, uh, we passed it already. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I think there, there is a stark uh, difference between what is being uh, discussed here right now, uh, Your Honor, and what the parliament wants as a transitional as a transition transitional justice and reconciliation program magkaiba ho yung mga juri, sa jurisdiction pa lang ho iba na ho. Uh, but nonetheless uh, uh, we fully agree uh, uh, Mr. Chair that 
uh, this representation as a representative of the Moro National Liberation Front in the BTA, we fully support the stance of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front as far as transitional justice and reconciliation uh, is concerned, because the implementation of all of the signed peace agreements also hinged on the implementation of the uh, and the full implementation of the comprehensive agreement and the Bangsamoro. So, kung may implement ho ang, ang, ang mga provisions ng CAB, we in the MNLF uh, sees it as a full implement as a as an implementation also of the peace agreements between the government and the Moro National Liberation Front. Now, going back to the issue at hand, yung sa transitional justice uh, sa, uh, yes, ng, ng BARM, uh, of course, uh, uh, we respect the, 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 the uh, positions of our colleagues. But uh, I, I think uh, uh, the approach to transitional justice, we believe, is a, is a collective effort. Uh, and uh, we, we, we will follow what the Bangsamoro government uh, 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 takes, you know, what position they will take, and because we believe that uh, uh, the, 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 the consistency on the approach of transitional justice is very, uh, very uh, important. And it would, lead, it would lead to a success on the uh, measure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Member Parliament, uh, Lorena. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just like to add that the two resolutions mentioned have already been referred to our committee. We have a, a Bangsamoro Justice Committee. It was already referred and we are ready to report that back to the Parliament. It does in addition, in addition to what uh, Deputy Speaker Sema mentioned as far as the two agreements, we are not only implementing the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, but we are also implementing the 1996 final peace agreement between the government of the Philippines and the Moro National Liberation Front. In the concluding uh, communique of Ijeda, which I presided when I was still under Secretary of OPAP, there were already agreements that the implementation of the club, CAB, and the implementation of the 1996 final peace agreement is already embodied in the implementation of Republic Act 11054 because provisions of the 1996 Final Peace Agreement was already incorporated into the law, similar to those also being provided for under the Comprehensive Agreement of the Bangsamor. So we are actually implementing two agreements in the pursuit of transitional justice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for that, uh, Member Parliament, uh, yeah, say Lorena. Next, um, how does the PTA document, how are you able to document the historical injustice against the Bangsamol? Na do document ba natin to? Sige, Sige Deputy Speaker Ali. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yan po ang dahilan na kami ay nananawagan sa national government na ipasa itong uh, bill na to related sa uh, National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission. Dahil base po sa aming uh, uh, pag, uh, pagdokumento, no? karamihan po ng mga injustices committed against the Bangsamoro was happened outside the bar, no? uh, including the Malisbong Massacre in Palimbang, the Manili Massacre in Carmen, North Cotabato, not mention the in, uh, massacre committed in Kauswagan, uh, Lano del, del Norte, uh, Sa aming pananaw po ay 90% na karamihan ng mga uh, injustices committed were down outside of the uh, barn, whereas only 10% in the, inside the barn. So, uh, hindi po uh, uh, hadlang na may pasa ang isang trans, uh, Bangsamoro Transitional Justice and Reconciliation, Reconciliation Commission sa loob ng barn, pero mas nangangailangan po ang uh, isang commission na national in scope na may pasa dahil yun po karamihan po ng mga nangyaring injustices were committed outside of the bar, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'd like to ask the uh, Commission on Human Rights and the National Commission on Indigenous People. Uh, the CHR, si ba, sa CHR, Attorney Erwin Kaliba, 
Uh, the CHR and NCIP, pareho lang naman ang tanong. Also, keep track the record of the historical abuses suffered by the Bangsamoro people and the IP group. Uh, as to the IP group, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have been uh, uh, tracking so, uh, particularly on uh, the indigenous peoples, uh, the non-Moro IPs. Uh, so far, that's, that's to my knowledge, uh, Mr. Chair. Any representation from uh, NCIP? Meron ba sa NCIP? Wala. Wala, no? So, NCIP? Sige po. Uh, do you keep track on the historical abuses so on bang, eh, sa mga, no? Bang, on that area, sa Bangsamoro, uh, and the IP group, lalo yung IP group in the, uh, in the area? Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair, and your honors. Uh, with respect to uh, the National Commission on Indigenous People, we are working actually with the Ministry of Indig Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Uh, NCIP is only uh, assisting and uh, helping the, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs with respect to its experiences on uh, the alleged uh, land disp dispositions. And we are coordinating with actually with the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, uh, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for that. Um, next, um, Siguro for the BTA again, can answer this. Um, kanina nabanggit yun, 90% of those uh, uh, atrocities nangyayari outside. No? So 10% lang yun nangyayari sa, sa BARM. Um, how do you measure your accomplishments? So, ito yung question, pero nasagot nyo na rin in terms of eventually eliminating the injustices in the region. Can we say that these injustices are somehow addressed through the BTA? At least, 10% na eh. lang. So, we how cannot, are they? How uh, we do you plan to uh, guarantee that, sir, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an exact statement right now? However, uh, the BTA uh, uh, have so many programs right now that uh, we can uh, actually uh, provide for our uh, fellow Bangsamoros outside of the uh, core territory. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, our, 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 uh, our main concern right now is we don't have any control with uh, the security. Uh, we have no control with uh, law enforcement. Uh, operations usually ho ang violations ho talaga sa yung uh, sa against our people come from law enforcement operations and uh, that's one concern na hindi wala kaming control the chief minister has no control over the police uh, he he only can recommend he only can make opinions make positions he has no command and control over police. But nonetheless, Mr. Chair, as far as we know, uh, we need we we would like to uh, reiterate na 90% nga talaga ng oppression ng nangyayari sa labas. In fact, ho, it is it is even cross border. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, in, 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 in Sabah, there are still undocumented moros there. And uh, that's one concern, hindi pa sila makauwi dahil nga yung citizenship nila hindi determined. Hindi determined. These are children of those who migrated to Sabah during the conflict. May mga Iranons of, Maginda, of the province of Maginda. They are, there are Tausugs, uh, there are Sama, there are Maranaos, there are Iranons, there are Kulibugan in, 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 in Sabah. But they are undocumented. They are considered stateless. So, uh, and uh, I think there is, there, uh, we don't know how, how the national government and the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, how the national government and the state of Malaysia uh, is resolving this. Ang alam, na, alam, na, alam namin, every now and then, maraming pinapabalik na mga, mga, mga halaw, so those who we call halaw. Uh, pinapauwi dito sa Pilipinas, hindi, man natin tina, hindi rin tinatanggap dahil undocumented, stateless. Stateless so sila. But the point here we're stating here, Mr. Chair, is that these are children or, uh, yeah, children, they were children of those who migrated to Malaysia because of, uh, of conflict. 
sila ho yung mga refugees noon. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, the, the MP Raisa here actually is the Minister of Social Services and Development. Her ministry deals with uh, these, these kind of issues, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, MP Raisa. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think, Mr. Chair, even if we are very happy that there is relative peace now in the Barang Samoro, this does not mean that um, the human rights violations that occurred systemically and in a la very large scale um, have been resolved. In fact, that is the reason why we are asking for the creation of this commission, because we are... While we are working on the present, we're talking about uh, decades of uh, human rights violations. And as mentioned earlier, we are asking for the national government to create this commission, even while the regional government has some measures that may address uh, some TJ issues. This will not be enough, uh, Mr. Chair. So, for example, for human rights violations, we're talking about institutions coming from the state. Uh, mainly from the national government. And if you have a commission in the regional government that will not be able to uh, exercise its powers and exact uh, action from national agencies. So, masaya po kami, merong relative peace. Uh, the, the biggest armed group uh, has, uh, in, in the recent years, they have already signed peace agreements with the with the national government but still we have issues of land dispossession brought about by laws that were passed over uh decades and which has displaced our people and uh which has caused a lot of conflicts that go beyond uh th those past decades up to now we're still experiencing the effects of this uh national loss uh and therefore mr chair we are saying that while the regional government has done some concrete actions uh pertaining to transitional justice uh, we deem it fit for national government to take this bang samara opportunity as mentioned by the chair of the tjrc uh, to look at the root cause of the conflict, hoping and making sure, not just hoping, but making sure that we don't go back to that um, dark past, no? that we address impunity and that there will be no recurrence of violence in the Bangsamoro, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, MP Raisa Jajuri. Uh, last, siguro, last question. Uh, la Another question. I am um, presidential assistant. With the permission of uh, yeah, with, General like Chair, to say something. Um, may I ask uh, Executive Director Bayam to say something, sir? Okay, Executive Director Bayam, with uh, with uh, regards to this issue. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the BTA for raising those concerns uh, in the part of the government for OPAPRO specifically. Uh, we acknowledge the statement given by the Deputy Speaker, Omar Sema. I think with the existing mechanisms right now, Your Honor, uh, we would appreciate uh, the members of the Parliament of the BTA if they can elevate to ICCMN, uh, especially those because those are very um, crucial and important concerns raised by Deputy Speaker, those undocumented Filipinos still in Sabah right now, lingering and in quandary on what are they, what's going to happen to them. Kawawa naman po sila. So, with an existing mechanism right, na, right now of the ICCM and pending the passage of these uh, bills right now, uh, pwede naman po natin pag-usapan yan sa ICCM at magagawa ng makakatulong dito ang national agencies, specifically ang DFA. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, kasi kung awari naman yung mga ano, stateless, no? Uh, Pakayat ng ganun. Yes, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Yeah, we, 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 when I went to Malaysia, Yan yung problema ng ating uh, uh, embassy doon. Yung problema ng ating mga kababayan doon sa Saba. Dahil as, as para sa Saba government is, uh, Malaysian government is concerned, hindi nila mabigyan ng social services ito mga tao na ito because hindi nila ito mga citizens. Uh, hindi, pati, lalo lalo na education. Hindi pwede mag-aaral yung mga bata. Tapos sa uh, 
Kung uuwi naman dito, i-declare naman sila ng uh, undocumented. So, kawawa itong mga tao ito kung saan sila pupunta. Uh, sabi nga, stateless. Uh, mabuti lang kung stateless. Ang mas mahirap pa kung magiging hopeless. Ay, alam mo na, uh, saan papunta yung tao pag hopeless na yung tao. So, siguro, hanapan natin ang paraan kung paano natin ma-address yan. Kawawa, mga Pilipino rin yun eh, by blood. Pilipino yan, dahil both parents sila, galing dito sa atin, galing sa Mindanao, nag-migrate nung nagkagulo, migrate doon, so by blood. Yung mga bata kahit doon na pwede nang nagsasaba, by blood, talagang Pilipino yun. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Santa De Rosa. Uh, it's valid point kasi kawawa. Tama kayo. Uh, talagang problema yan ng ano natin na embassy ron. Malaysian government cannot give them the benefits kasi hindi state this na tapos sa uh, embassy hindi rin mabigyan ng ng uh, anumang assistance because again their state so hopefully that will be uh, given attention no? uh, while we are in the process of uh, passing this measure. Um, under the bills, there will be four subcommissions to address the specific, uh, specific aspects of transitional justice for the Bangsamora. Uh, namely, ito po yung subcommissions, uh, Bangsamora Historical Memory uh, Against Impunity and the Promotion of Accountability and Rule of Law in the Bangsamoro and Land Disposition, Dispossession and last, Bangsamoro Healing and Reconciliation. Do this holistically cover the objectives of the transitional justice under the normalization program? Anybody can answer. Um, Mr. Chair, yes, we believe that the proposed uh, structure of the commission as uh, provided in the two bills are uh, going to be responsive to the needs of the Bank Samoro. Uh, taking into consideration that these are also part of the recommendations of the TJRC, Mr. Chair which conducted a lot of consultations and listening processes um, as well as uh, consultations with uh, experts and using the dealing with the past uh, paradigm, Mr. Chair, as presented earlier by um, um, Madam Moblicker, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, MP Raisa. Now we ask uh, OPAPRU or uh, Office of the President, the Intercabinet Cluster Mechanism on Normalization, yung ICCMN, was tasked to work towards the adoption implementation of the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Program for the MARM. What are the key accomplishments of the ICCMN with respect to this mandate? With permission of the Chair, may I ask uh, Director Galliardo? Yes, uh, you may take the seat there, Director Gallardo. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, one of the major milestones of the ICCMN TGR is the approval of an ICCMN uh, roadmap uh, on transitional justice. This is the government's uh, proposal to the MILF implementing panel, Mr. Chair, insofar as uh, responding to the TGRC report. So, um, in addition, Mr. Chair, the uh, roadmap um, is composed of the four themes, which was also the recommendation of the TGRC uh, report. Uh, there is a pillar on history and um, history. There's a pillar on justice, a pillar on um, land, and a pillar on a guarantee of non-recurrence. Uh, Mr. Chair, are the uh, that's what the healing and reconciliation in the current bills, Mr. Chair. So what were the recommendations, uh, what recommendations were adopted by ICC I mean, and from the report of the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission? What were, uh, ano po yung mga na-adopt nyo? Sir, there were um, a lot of recommendations that were adopted because uh, in the TGRC report, there are two major recommendations. Number one is the establishment of the National Transitional um, Justice and Reconciliation uh, Commission for the Bank Samora. And second is the implementation of around 89 um, programs or interventions to address uh, 
um, issues across those four uh, themes, uh, Mr. Chair. So the ICCMN uh, TGR roadmap uh, have adopted several of these uh, interventions, especially those pertaining to certain mandates of the government agencies, Mr. Chair. So how do we address the challenges? Yeah, siguro, tanong ko na si Director, what are... The uh, how do we address the challenges of how to believe for past human rights uh, uh, violations and abuses? Uh, or what are the key challenges? Sir, in the, the ICCM and TGR uh, roadmap, which is now uh, currently being reviewed by the GPH MILF Technical Working Group, as this would be the a joint roadmap that will be approved by the panel, um, one of the uh, uh, programs or the interventions that we adopted under the um, pillar on history is actually the data collection, Mr. Chair, in terms of the human rights abuses, because we need to start somewhere in terms of uh, ensuring that we'll be able to address. So we need to document also. Uh, while there are documentation, we need to have a comprehensive documentation on all these cases, Mr. Chair. So are we able to involve the victims, survivors in the implementation of the recommendations na involved naman po siya? Um, Mr. Chair, we have not technically started uh, implementing um, the roadmap, Mr. Chair, because we are still on the process of um, getting the consensus at the level of the technical working group. And uh, as mentioned by Idir de Mesa a while ago, um, we are... Um, scheduled to consult with the ICCMN agencies again because this is an update of the uh, one approved in 2021 and the BARM agencies as well, Mr. Chair. And uh, that's where the uh, the approval of the panel will come in, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Yung issue on uh, land disposition, as uh, mentioned a while ago by our Honorable uh, Member of Parliament, Ma'am, uh, yung land disposition uh, that uh, that's uh, that resulted from allegedly from the passage of national laws that allowed that allowed it. Uh, can can we can this committee be uh, provided with those uh, laws para mapag-aralan namin? Dating na namin pag-aralan namin. Ano yung mga batas na yun? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in the TJRC report, there's also mention of uh, these laws. There were a series of laws, particularly during the American period, where um, the, the power of the traditional leaders over lands within their territories were voided. Uh, their acts of uh, allowing their subjects or <laughs> those that they uh, govern um, were voided because the theory is that if these lands are not registered, there are no titles to this land, uh, then they are not the uh, within the ownership of the native inhabitants. So this is the concept of regalian doctrine. Po. The same uh, idea that uh, is uh, in the heart of the struggle of the indigenous peoples in general. So with that concept po, that kung wala po kayong titulo, then the land is not yours and the land belongs to the state. So all these native inhabitants, including the Bangsamoro people, uh, were dispossessed of their land. And it, is, it became the land, uh, the ownership was recognized as that, uh, as belonging to the state. And with that concept, Mr. Chair, uh, land holdings were provided to other uh, Filipinos at that time. And uh, some of the laws would say that if you are a Christian, uh, you may have this much land holdings, but if you are a non-Christian, you can only have this much. So that's already, that's provided in the law po. Batas na po yung nagsasabi. Uh, there were a series of laws and there were resettlement laws that uh, created resettlement which allowed for or encouraged people from other places to go to Mindanao and resettle there. We are not saying that they should go back. It's just that historically, this is what happened. Uh, the, those who are 
who are considered native inhabitants were dispossessed of the lands and uh, these land holdings eventually went to those who uh, migrated to Mindanao, thereby not only uh, changing the uh, ownership concept, the uh, framework or the laws pertaining to ownership, but also dispossessing people and also um, undermining whatever political structures there were uh, among the native inhabitants, uh, Mr. Chair. So thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in that case, uh, that grapes uh, does, is not only a monopoly of uh, the people from Burm, it is also uh, a per, uh, uh, that grape is also pervading uh, kahinda doon sa mga Christian Mindanaoans. Dahil nga, sabi nga ng lulo ko noon, malaki na yung lupa nila noon. Tapos may dumating na Tagaluson na mayaman na alam kung paano magpatitulo hanggat, hanggat lahat ng uh, pinatituluhan doon. Eh, wala yan sa isip ng mga lulo namin noong magpatitulo eh. So yun, uh, we have the same gripes uh, actually. <laughs> thank you ma'am, thank you. Salamat. Salamat Mr. Chair. Director Kalil. Yes, uh, Director Kalil Bayan from DNR. Apo, yeah. Uh, yeah, very important. Sige po. Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I agree po dun sa statement ni uh, isang makakalikasang araw po nga pala sa ating lahat. I agree po dun sa statement ni MP that uh, all untitled lands, especially uh, yung mga alien na mula disposable na untitled, belongs to the state. Opo. Uh, however, meron pong pagkakataon yung mga kababayan natin, regardless kung Moro man or ano. So long na may proof na matagal na po silang nakatira doon sa area, and then uh, on the part of the NR, we allow them to be, ano, yung disposition po, binibigay po namin sa kanila. So long na qualified po sila. And then uh, alienable and disposable po sila. Kasi po, uh, basically, ang management po ng lupain ng Pilipinas ay nasa mandato po ng Departamento ng DNR. So uh, sa, sa ngayon po, uh, in in the case of BARM, uh, considering na autonomous government na yung BARM, may counterpart po kami na tinatawag na Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Energy. Sila po yung counterpart ng DNR sa BARM. So uh, just to inform the, the, the committee, meron po kaming pinirmahan na memorandum of understanding ang, uh, ang aming uh, kalihim, si Secretary Maria Antona Yulo Loizaga, with the Minister of the... Uh, uh, environment ng BARM si uh, Minister Ahmad Brahim to assist them uh, in terms of technical assistance po uh, Mr. Chair and other related matters po uh, in uh, protecting and conserving our uh, environment and then uh, just recently uh, Mr. Chair uh, nag-consult din po yung Land Management Bureau namin and dun po sa management po ng mga lupa na belong, belongs to the state within BARM jurisdiction. So, uh, our uh, legal department or legal service in the central office uh, commented po na na-devolve na po sa Menre yung mga land management ng, ng, uh, ng kalupain po ng, uh, ng estado. So yung Menre na po yung magmamanage in terms of leasing, leasing it ano kasi po agad hindi pa po na tituluhan yan, pwede pong mag-lease po yung occupant. Opo, yung in terms of disposition etc yung leasing po na lupa kung napapakinabangan naman po, pwede pong i -lease. So ang management po ngayon is na, na devolve na po sa ano po sa Menre po based on the organic law po ng Bangsamoro. So with that, um, Mr. Chair, uh, I think the lawyer from LMB or Bureau can add also. Uh, Attorney Carlon Pambid, actually, itong tanong po ni Sato De La Rosa is very uh, significant, no? Lalo yung part to address yung disposition. It's, it will be good to know to ha kung ano ginagawa ng DNR tsaka yung uh, Land Management Bureau about this. Sige, Attorney Pambid. 
Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. So just to add dun sa since ang sinasabi ni Director is na devolved na nga. So since ang napansin namin dito sa proposed bill is data gathering dun sa, sa land dispossession, what we, we are proposing that we could uh, maybe share the, the public land application geospatial information database based dun sa mga previous na disposition na nung nasa amin pa yung, yung, yung disposition for their data gathering. So yun lang siguro yung pinapropose namin dun sa provision ng database gathering. So for the public land application, kasi dun sa part naman ng DNR as said by our director, uh, syempre yung mga dinispose namin based on qualified occupants. So pwede, na, pwede namin siguro yung provide yung, yung mga database na yun for the gathering para ma-address yung, yung sa restitution ng mga lupa. Chair. Kung meron man. Yes, uh, Speaker uh, Seth. Mr. Chair, yeah, uh, we fully recognize the 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 sh shared powers no, between the DNR and the MENRE uh, dun sa competence ho nila sa region and of course at the national level. What what we are practically raising here, Mr. Chair, the majority of the uh, uh, issue on land dispossession occurs outside of the uh, core territory of the Bangsamoro. Uh, if you if you go back to records, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, in in the 1970s when people were being displaced, another group of people will enter their property and they become owners because they will they would. Practically, practically claim that they are the sole owners and they've been there in possession when practically may mga tao lang ho na na-displace na umalis dun sa lugar dahil may conflict. Nung pagbalik na ho nila sa, sa, sa uh, lupa nila, sir, meron na hong nakatira na iba, may titulo na. And that is one cause of problem, Mr. Chair. Because it, it, there, there are cases like this in North Cotabato, particularly in, 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 in the Piquit area, in Cabacan area, and in Carmen area. There are cases like this. Pe Bangs, Moro people, Maguindanon people, and Iranon people have been displaced because of the conflict. Pagbalik ko nila dun sa lupa nila, wala na, titulado na ho ng ibang tao yung uh, 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 lupa nila. And we are not even referring here to religious groups. We are, all, we are referring this... Parehas na tao, sir, na nangangailangan ng resources. And uh, the, the, the only unfortunate issue there is na display, may na-displace lang. pag displace inagawan. And this continues to occur, Mr. Chair. Uh, in uh, Particularly in North Cotabato, in South Cotabato, and in the Sarangani areas. And even in Zamboanga areas, marami pa rin ho nangyayari na ganito. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I, I agree with the findings of... Uh, uh, member of uh, Parliament Sima. Uh, marami yan, marami ang kaso doon. Kahit sino-sino, narinig natin, di ba? Ma, ma Musliman, ma Christian, ma, ma yung mga IP doon, uh, talagang uh, andyan yung problema na yun. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator De La Rosa, now we go to DOJ. Uh, Senator President of DOJ. Attorney Carmina, Anormina. Yes, sir. Uh, question lang, what is the treatment of the DOJ of the criminal cases related to the Bangsamoro conflict? How can the agency contribute to the transitional justice in dealing with cases related to the region and the Bangsamoro people? Um, in treatment lang of the criminal cases. Good morning, Mr. Chair and my colleagues in the government service from the Bangsamoro government and the national government. Sir, as far as I'm concerned, the Department of Justice is um, limited to what is uh, uh, provided or in, uh, limited in terms of uh, accepting cases. Uh, because uh, as far as the Department of Justice is concerned, by the way, I'm sorry for that. Um, as far as the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice is concerned, we are confined to what is provided in the administrative code. So basically, we entertain all criminal cases, and this is uh, this uh, pertains to the National Prosecution Service. Um, uh, in I think in the previous uh, house um, 
uh, bill from the house we we opine or we uh, submitted a position regarding the uh, the creation of the national commission uh, for the transitional justice and reconciliation we fully support the initiative but however we are we have reservations with respect to the investigative, prosecutorial, and land titling, because this may affect the jurisdiction of three attached agencies of the department, namely the National Bureau of Investigation and the National Prosecution Service, as well as the Land Registration Authority. But in terms of criminal cases uh, uh, pertaining to uh, 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 those who belong to the Bank Samoro, we, we basically accept all cases, sir. We don't uh, have any reservation with respect to accepting cases based on, you know. So there are enough, siguro, si, uh, kayo pong, ano, state council yes, legal sir. staff. Yes, uh, has the DOJ conducted a mapping inventory of criminal cases sa relate, related to Bang Samoro people? Uh, as of now, sir, no. I am not aware of that, sir. Basically, what we do know is that we have a counterpart, the Bang Samoro Attorney General's Office, the BAGO, uh, and they have jurisdiction over these cases now. But so as far as the DOJ is concerned, in terms of data gathering with respect to uh, accused or any cases involving members of the Bank Samoro or a Muslim for that matter, we are not really basing our records based on the religious uh, aspects or, or their concern. Uh, Sige, last na lang po, yung what are our international obligations in terms of violation of international human rights law and international humanitarian law? Uh, as far, sir, the Department of Justice is very much involved in the um, in the critiquing, the legislative critical, critiquing of the int, uh, internally displaced bill, internally displaced persons bill. So basically, we are really... Uh, it, inclined towards and we have an office in the department of justice basically um uh task with respect to refugees and statelessness and internally displaced persons and we are uh, committed with the unhcr the high commission on internally displaced persons so basically yun lang po yung parang uh, uh, transitional justice and also we are part of the iccmn and we participate in the uh, planning and uh, uh, the development of the roadmap as well because uh, we I became part of the cluster on non-recurrence where we also in the land titling in the, uh, and also involved in the several meetings conducted by the OPA PRU re regarding the land titling and internally displaced people, sir. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Attorney Normina Jul Tadifa. Now we move on to DND. AFP, PNP, and DILG. Common questions lang, no? With respect to the efforts of disbanding private armed groups in the Bangsamoro region, may we get a report from the agencies uh, of these efforts progress? So you can just submit to the committee, no? In to, with regards, siguro, DILG, uh, also PNP and uh, the NDAFP. With regards to the efforts of disbanding private armed groups in the Bangsamoro, probably, siguro, uh, you can, siguro, in a nutshell, kung ano po ang uh, efforts natin. Uh, siguro, ASEC uh, Henry Robinson of the ND. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, uh, Sen Senator Ejercito. At the outset, I would like to manifest that the DND's part and involvement in the Senate bill being discussed, which lays the legal framework for the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Program for the Bangsamoro, as well as the National Justice for and Reconciliation Commission, is in the aspect of security of the normalization process. We in the AFP is the implementing and working closely in coordination with the Office of Presidential Advisor for Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity, or OPAPRU. Now, the Indy also takes the same position with the OPAPRU, sir. And for the implementation of uh, the security aspect, I will uh, give the floor to uh, the AAP representative, Captain uh, Dimaporo. For the update, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, update us, Captain Dimaboro. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Uh, 
Before anything else, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Captain Dimaporo, a Philippine Navy MLSA, the Chief of the APP's Development Office, Abang Samoro. And I am the personal staff of uh, General uh, Romeo S. Browner, Philippine Army, the Chief of Armed Forces of the Philippines. And before anything else, I'd like to convey uh, the position of the Armed Forces of the Philippines that we support the initiative of the Senate in uh, pushing for the um, passing of the a bill on the National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission, establishing a uh, Transitional Justice Reconciliation Program for the Bangsamoro people. Uh, as far as the um, um, security sector, particularly the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we are focused in complying with the uh, security components of the, uh, of the transitional uh, normalization component on security, and we provide support, uh, particularly on the different mechanisms particularly in the Joint uh, Normaliz Normalization Committee, the independent uh, the commissioning body, the Joint Peace and Security Teams, the um, Task Force for uh, the Commissioning of, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, particularly your question on the, on the National Task Force on this band of private armed groups. As for the latest report that we received, there are no active uh, uh, no active um, private armed groups in the area of Western Mindanao as well as Eastern Mindanao, but there are potential private armed groups. As for the latest report, sir, thank you so much. PNP, uh, General uh, Placer, any update uh, with respect to the efforts of the expanding yeah. private armed groups in the region? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honors, sa inyong lahat na magandang umaga po ulit. Uh, the, we would like to uh, manifest also that the PNP uh, in response to the deliverables of the transit, transit, transitional justice and reconciliation aspect of the normalization under the more normalization program for the Bangsamoro region. We have already uh, organized the technical working group on transitional justice and reconciliation way back October 2019. Uh, we continue to uh, complete our deliverables. Part po, significant po dyan, sir, yung guan, uh, incorporation of the Bangsamoro history and culture dun sa aming graduates, ng, uh, sa aming uh, cadets ng Philippine National Police Academy, yung aming uh, mga patrol men na recruits, and uh, yung in-service trainings po natin so that they will understand uh, when they will be assigned there sa kultura ng guan, ng uh, Bangsamoro region, sir. As to the efforts dun sa National Task Force for the Disbandment of Private Armed Groups, which is what under the security aspect ng uh, normalization program, pa rin, sir. There, uh, dagdagan po lang, ko lang po yung sinabi ni Captain Dimapuro. He's my counterpart, sir. Actually, I'm from also the, from the PNP Peace Process and Development Center counterpart po kami dalawa. Uh, there is a National Task Force for the Disbandment of Private Armed Groups composed of uh, uh, task forces Eastern Mindanao and Western Mindanao, as sinabi niya po na there are potential private armed groups that can be maybe utilized in the, the coming elections. However, sir, the task forces, yung dalawang APCs, Eastern Mindanao namin at saka Western Mindanao are doing uh, law enforcement efforts supported by the armed forces to uh, address the uh, concerns, sir. Senator De Rosa. Yeah, Mr. Chair, very important yan, ha? potential. Uh, bang potential pa lang sila, Unahan na ninyo. Huwag ninyo hintayin pang maging full blown na armed group sila. Eh, uh, alam na, uh, what to do. Dapat meron na kayong mga preemptive measures para sigurado tayo. Ngayon 2025, uh, peaceful talaga tayo. Pagdating na 2025 elections. Yes, sir. Asik uh, Benitez, meron ba ang DLG o yun sa PNP na rin ang ano nyo? Yung uh, with regards to the private armed group. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Chair. No, in so far as the, uh, the updates or the data on the disbandment of these pri private armed groups, then we will differ. The DALG basically differs to the more empirical data of the PNP. But with your permission, uh, Mr. Chair, and of course the good Senator uh, Batua de la Rosa, I just would like to elicit some few points. Now, this will be the stand of the department. Yes, uh, that's very important. Well, basically the, the department through its head secretary, Benhar Abalos, now supports now this measure on transitional justice for reconciliation and commissioning or for commission in the Bangsamoro area. Now, we believe uh, we stand on all fours with your commitment that we should rectify the errors of history, now possibly redress 
institutional human rights violation and other forms of discrimination, including legitimate grievances emanating from the Bangsamoro people. Likewise, naniniwala po kami na ang transitional justice is a very effective mechanism for addressing the concerns of the Bangsamoro people, particularly the deprived ones. But, um, Mr. Chair, now, the humble representation believes that for a very effective implementation of this proposed measure, we believe that there must be a proper uh, synchronization or harmonization between the national laws, now particularly the constitution, and the laws that are being uh, formulated or cascaded or being produced in the Bangsamoro region. And on this particular perspective, and with all due respect and humility, now the national government and the department believe that laws to be crafted by the Bangsamoro region should find harmony with the national law. Now, just allow me to present one particular issue vis-a-vis -vis the stand of the department. Now, recently we have come across the Bangsamoro Local Government Code, and there is a particular provision there that pertains to the exercise of general supervision now on, on the part of the Bangsamoro region. Now, the national government believes that this power should belong only to the president as basically a spouse under the fundamental law. And yet, there is a collatilia or a provision in the Bangsamoro local government code that this could be exercised by another official. Although we do not want to preempt any possible ruling of the courts, Mr. Chair and of course the good senator. Now, we see that this is a potential problem later on. And for the transitional justice reconciliation to become successful as ambition, ambition by the by the authors, now we believe that there should be a proper harmonization between the local laws and the national law, if only for us to be able to advance and to move forward. You know, po, Mr. Chair, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Asik uh, Romeo Benitez. Yes, uh, uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Jose Lorena. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. While well, we recognize that position, we, the Bangsamoro Parliament passed the law based on Republic Act 11054. Under Article 7 of that law, the ABARM is still under the general supervision of the President. It is very clear. But it should also be recognized that under that autonomy law, the Bangsamoro is authorized, is required, mandated to come out with its local government code. Because the system of governance we have as provided for under 11054, is different from the system of governance in the national. We have a parliamentary system. And therefore, the idea of an autonomy is to tailor its legislation to its accepted culture as provided for in the preamble of Republic Act 11054. While we admit that we should be working, there is what we call the Bangsamoro Parliament, Philippine Congress of the Philippines Forum where the discussion on these issues could be done. And uh, I hope uh, the court can come out with a, a decision on that matter because that particular provision was challenged on the supervision. In fact, the supervision of the president of the BARM is different to the kind of supervision that he has over local government because in the BARM it is to implement national and regional laws. So there should be a clearer understanding of that provision because that is why we would like to wait for the decision of the Supreme Court on that matter, rather than to be hasty on coming out with some uh, opinion which that which may not which may contravene what the law eleven zero five four has provided for us and passed by Congress of the in the Senate of the Philippines for the Bangsamoro. Thank you, just for the record. Thank you, uh, Member of Parliament uh, Jose Lorena. Uh, siguro tanong na din natin sa AFP and PNP pa rin. Uh, you know, the community is an integral part of normalization. At present, I just like to know, at present, how many MILF, BIFF combatants were decommissioned? Anybody from the AFP can answer? Uh, the, the, or siguro sa, sino bang pinasagot? CPA si yan na lang, si Sir Yano. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to respond to that. On uh, the number of uh, combatants decommissioned, we now have uh, 26,132 individuals out of the planned 40,000. And uh, on the weapons, uh, Mr. Chair, we now have uh, 4,625 weapons out of the 7,000. 
So, ano, on schedule naman po yun? Yeah, actually, uh, Mr. Chair, there are four phases in the decommissioning. And we have, we have completed the three phases already. And uh, we are to implement the phase four, which is the last phase of the decommissioning. Thank you. Thank you. And also, uh, are there any programs? Ano, what programs are uh, being implemented for that transformation to be to those who will for them to be productive members of society ito mga mga ano uh, mga, mga rep, uh, fighters no who used to uh, how anong pong mga programa for their transformation actually mr chair there are four aspects uh, in the transformation one is the one is the social uh, services and uh, meaning uh, the social services portion we are uh, addressing on the identities of these uh, individuals giving uh, them uh, ident uh, documents on uh, their identity and we also have uh, uh, we are also covering them on um, the health insurance of these individuals the commission combatants and um, i mentioned earlier the civil uh, registration of these individuals and we also attend to their livelihood requirements, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, and also we are capacitating them and uh, this pertains to giving them education, uh, educational assistance. And uh, the last portion actually, Mr. Chair, is in the socioeconomic. So um, that is uh, the most important. Uh, and uh, recently, both panels uh, from the MILF and the government uh, have agreed on the um, on the uh, framework and on the standard package of uh, socioeconomic uh, interventions for the decommissioned combatants. So we are happy um, to inform the body that uh, both both panels have agreed on the socioeconomic packages uh, to be given to these uh, decommissioned combatants, and we are now in the implementation of this. Uh, Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, PA uh, Cesariano. Cesar Next, we move to DBM. Uh, Tony Trisha Baraan is always here in the Senate. In terms of financing the, the development in the Bangsamoa region, how is this reflected in the annual spending of the government? How much did we allocate for the region in 20, for 2024? Good morning, Mr. Chair. For for the BARM po for 2024, we have 149 billion. And then we also have the uh, normalization program po under OPAPRU. Over the years from 2015 to 2024, may 7.8 billion na rin po for that. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Just want to make sure that these are funded so that uh, the goals will be realized in the implementation phase. Anyway, um, those are the important questions that we have already asked and issues. I'd just like to ask um, the uh, your position papers, respective position papers that we submitted to the committee. Tapos yung po sa civil service, yung position nyo rin po. Uh, and also LRA, kanina medyo na-address naman yung natanong naman yung sa disposition and other issue on land. Can you just submit to this committee? The attorney Sal Elizalde is here. Yes, sir. sir yes, your honor. We will submit our position paper. However, I'd like to just say that we, I think we emailed an advanced copy already yesterday. Okay, thank you for that. No? Thank you. Thank you. Tasa NCIP, no? Kanina, naan natin, pati yung respective position papers. Okay. So, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, attorney Molina. Mauna na po doon. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we would also want to manifest uh, that on the issue of statelessness, uh, the Commission on Human Rights is uh, working with its counterpart in Malaysia, in the in the Suhakam. So, uh, as we speak right now, uh, Commissioner uh, Faye Dumarpa and the head of the Center for Crisis and Humanitarian Protection are there attending a World Summit on statelessness. And one of the issues is the Sabah conflict. Uh, is the Sabi statelessness of Philippines there? Thank you, Attorney Erwin Kaliba of CHR. Uh, that's very difficult to be stateless. Ang hirap nun. Malaysian government, Philippine government, we cannot give, uh, extend assistance, no? Or anything. 
So I hope that will be uh, given priority. Here's uh, yes. Deputy Speaker uh, Sema. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Also, the Bangsamoro Parliament, is uh, there is a pending uh, resolution there to organize our own committee on the Halau. And uh, we will uh, send a team to uh, to Malaysia to uh, uh, yeah to investigate and uh, look into the to the issue of this uh, uh, halau. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And uh, next, Attorney Christian Modina, Mr. Of, Chair, uh, Civil Service. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, good morning. Uh, good noon. Uh, Senator JV, uh, as well as the uh, fellow resource speakers and uh, public servants. Uh, on behalf of the Civil Service Commis Commission, in general, the Commission yields to the wisdom and sound discretion of the legislature in determining the need for the adoption of the proposed legislative measure. Nonetheless, uh, Mr. Chair, we request permission to submit a comment or position paper on a later date. Uh, by way of initial comment, Mr. Chair, may we suggest that uh, Section 9 in both bills should expressly indicate that aside from the approval of the organizational structure and staffing, staffing pattern by the DBM, the qualification standards of positions included therein shall be subject to the approval of the Civil Service Commission. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Molina of Civil Service. We also will wait for your position papers. <laughs> so with that, uh, the committee chair would like to thank everyone, especially our esteemed resource persons for actively participating in our discussions today. If there are no more matters to be taken up, uh, the chair hereby adjourns this committee hearing. Maraming salamat po. Recording stopped.